Welcome to this lecture on initial boundary value problems for heat equation. We are going to use method of separation of variables to solve the initial boundary value problem. So, what is an initial boundary value problem? We will define and we will define what is the meaning of its solution. So, the initial boundary value problem for heat equation consists of solving the heat equation ut equal to uxx posed on the domain x belonging to the interval 0 L and t belonging to the interval 0 comma capital T where capital T is a fixed number. U of 0 t equal to g 1 of t valid for t between 0 and capital T. So, this is one of the boundary conditions. The second boundary condition is U of L comma t that is also prescribed to be g 3 of t and then the initial condition u x 0 equal to g 2 of x where x is between 0 and L. So, where g 1, g 2, g 3 are given functions. So, we are given these 3 functions g 1, g 2, g 3 we are supposed to find a function which solves this equation and also satisfying these 3 conditions. So, this is x equal to 0, x equal to L. So, this is a boundary. So, we are prescribed u of 0 t here and here u of L comma t and this is u of x comma 0. Of course, we have put this is a t axis. So, t equal to t here. We are not prescribing any condition on this. If we prescribe a condition on this line as well, then it will be a boundary value problem. We are going to see in a future lecture that boundary value problem for heat equation is not well posed. So, that is why we consider only initial boundary value problem. So, initial condition u of x 0 at time t equal to 0 and these are the boundary conditions which are given. Of course, we can consider other kinds of boundary conditions. Here we have considered what are called Dirichlet boundary conditions. We can consider other types of boundary conditions exactly like we did for the wave equation. So, what is the meaning of a solution to the initial boundary value problem? Let R denote the rectangle 0 L cross 0 T. Let C H, H for heat denote the collection of all functions phi defined on this rectangle taking values in real numbers such that the functions phi the first order derivative is phi x and phi t and second order derivative with respect to x phi x x. These are all continuous on R closure. In fact, we do not require it to be continuous on R closure because the conditions are prescribed only on this, on this, on this. We do not require it to be continuous here. A function v belongs to C ch is said to be a solution to the initial boundary value problem on R if v satisfies the heat equation and satisfies the 3 conditions, the 2 boundary conditions v 0 t equal to g 1 t and v l t equal to g 3 t and the initial condition. A remark, since the equation u t equal to u x x is linear and homogeneous the principle of superposition holds for its solutions. Thus, a solution to the given IBVP may be obtained by a superposition of solutions of 3 IBVPs, where each one of these IBVPs feature exactly one of the 3 functions g1, g2, g3 and other 2 functions are 0 functions. We are going to describe separation of variables methods when g1 and g3 are equal to 0. So, given a function phi defined on the interval 0 L, find a solution to the homogeneous heat equation u t equal to u x x for x in 0 L and t positive. Initial condition u x 0 equal to phi x for x between 0 and L and the boundary conditions which are Dirichlet boundary conditions we are considering u of 0 t is 0, u of L t is 0. In other words, what we have done is we have set u equal to 0 as a boundary condition here and we are considering only this to be general function. So, this is just one of those 3 IBVPs that we mentioned earlier. If you notice here we have t positive of course, we can consider t in the interval 0 comma capital T for some capital T positive. 
that also we can consider. So, as a consequence if you want to define what is the solution of this it must be in CH for each capital T positive. We are going to discuss more about the solution of this in a future lecture. So, we describe a separation of variables method to solve this IVVP. So, what are the main steps involved in separation of variables method? The IBVP features homogeneous seat equation and 0 Dirichlet boundary conditions. So, step 1 2 families of ODE is obtained from heat equation. How do we get that? We look for solutions to heat equation in the separated form uxt equal to xx into t of t. The heat equation will give rise to 2 families of ODEs indexed by a single parameter lambda, one for x and another for t that is one family of ODEs for x and one family of ODEs for t. The Dirichlet boundary conditions in the IBVP will yield boundary conditions for x. The step 2 is obtaining non-zero solutions to the two families of ODEs. The BVP for x turns out to be what is known as eigenvalue problem. So, it turns out that only a countable number of BVPs from the family indexed by lambda n n belongs to n will have non-zero solutions. For each of these eigenvalues we need to then solve for t. At the end of step 2 we have a countable number of non-zero functions x and x into t and t. Step 3 proposing a formal solution as a superposition of this non-zero functions that we have obtained. So, superposition of the functions x and x t and t is proposed as a formal solution to the IBVP and then it remains to check whether this formal solution is indeed a solution, what are the conditions that are needed on the initial data phi. So, step 1 heat equation gives rise to 2 ODEs and one of them there is a boundary value problem. So, method of separation of variables looks for solutions of the form uxt equal to xx into tt. Of course, x in this finite interval 0l and t positive. So, substituting this ansatz in the heat equation gives us this equation. And dividing both sides of this equation with xx and tt and rearranging terms will give us t prime by t equal to x double dash by x. So, in this equation t prime by t equal to x double dash by x the LHS is a function of t only and the RHS is a function of x only. Such an equation can hold if and only if both the functions are identically equal to a constant function. It means that there exists lambda in R a real number lambda such that t prime by t equal to x double dash by x equal to that lambda. One of the tasks is to find all possible lambdas which are coming from the separated solutions, non-zero separated solutions. So, this equation which we have got on the last slide gives rise to two ODEs, one for t and one for x. What are they? x double dash minus lambda x equal to 0 and t prime minus lambda t equal to 0. It is not surprising the heat equation has two derivatives with respect to x variable. So, therefore, the equation satisfied by capital X is second order and the equation satisfied by capital T is first order because the heat equation features only the first order derivative with respect to t. Now, we have two boundary conditions using them we will get a boundary value problem for x. So, using the boundary condition u of 0 t equal to 0 what we get is x of 0 into t of t equal to 0 for every t. So, this can mean that either x of 0 is a 0 or t is identically equal to 0 function. We are not interested in t of t identically equal to 0 therefore, x of 0 is 0. If t of t is identically equal to 0 we get nothing because as we saw in step 3 we are going to propose as a superposition of x and x and t and t as solutions. If, if t and t is 0 for some n it does not make sense because it is 0 there is no term like that. Therefore, we cannot admit t to be 0 and hence we conclude x of 0 is 0. 
Similarly, using the boundary condition u of l t equal to 0, we get x of l equal to 0. So, we got two conditions for x, x of 0 is 0, x of l is 0. So, we have the boundary value problem for x given by x double dash minus lambda x equal to 0 and the values of x at x equal to 0 and x equal to l are 0. So, the ODE for t is t prime minus lambda t equal to 0, we do not get any condition for t unlike uh, what we have got in the wave equation case. So, finding non-zero solutions to BVP for x that is a step 2. So, this is the boundary value problem we are interested in solving and we are looking for non-zero solutions of this boundary value problem. Of course, as you see x identically equal to 0 is a solution for every lambda, but we are not interested in that. So, the lambdas for which the BVP admits a non-zero solution are called eigenvalues and the corresponding non-zero solutions are called eigenfunctions. So, let us start our search for eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. Note that the lambda which is a real number it can be 0, positive or negative. So, therefore, our search we will conduct in 3 steps lambda equal to 0, lambda positive, lambda negative. Why is that? It is because of this equation that we have x double dash minus lambda x equal to 0. If lambda is positive, we can write the solution in terms of exponentials, a general solution. If lambda is negative, the general solution is in terms of the sine and cosine functions. And of course, if lambda equal to 0, x is a x plus b, x of x equal to a x plus b. So, the, the nature or the form of the solution changes depending on whether lambda is 0, positive or negative. That is the reason why we are going to divide our search for eigenvalues and eigenfunctions into 3 steps. So, let us take lambda equal to 0. Then the boundary value problem for x becomes x double dash equal to 0 and x of 0 equal to x of l equal to 0. General solution of x double dash equal to 0 is a x plus b for some constants a and b real numbers. But now we are going to look for those solutions which satisfy these boundary conditions. That means what we get is a equal to b equal to 0 because if you see look at this the graph of this is a straight line and that is supposed to pass through 0 comma 0 as well as l comma 0 and the only straight line which passes through uh, 0 comma 0 as well as l comma 0 is x of x equal to 0 y equal to 0. So, a equal to b equal to 0. The line is the x axis itself. So, this lambda equal to 0 is not an eigenvalue. What about lambda positive? Are there positive eigenvalues? So, because lambda is positive, we can always write down as lambda equal to mu square. It is in the interest of uh, non-complicated notations where mu is positive equation is x double dash minus mu square x equal to 0, boundary condition remains the same. Now, general solution of the ODE x double dash minus mu square x equal to 0 is combination of exponentials. So, a e power mu x plus b e power minus mu x. Imagine if we are not set lambda equal to mu square, we would have had here square root of lambda instead of a simple looking mu. That is the reason we always do like this. The moment something is positive, we write it as mu square for mu positive. So, now we have to check if there are solutions which satisfy these boundary conditions and non-zero functions. So, applying the boundary conditions x of 0 equal to x of l equal to 0, it is easy to see that we get a equal to b equal to 0. It means no non-zero solutions exist for this boundary value problem. So, no positive number is an eigenvalue. So, now what remains is to look for eigenvalues which are negative. So, since lambda is negative, we can write down lambda to be minus mu square where mu is positive. So, the BVP for x becomes x double dash plus mu square x equal to 0 and the boundary condition is x 0 equal to x l equal to 0. So, general solutions of the ODE x double dash plus mu square x equal to 0 is x of x equal to a cos mu x plus b sin mu x. Once again, if we have not set lambda equal to minus mu square, what we would have had here is square root of minus lambda 
x which is confusing that is why we choose uh, to write lambda equal to minus mu square. Now applying the boundary conditions x of 0 equal to x of l equal to 0 what do we get? Suppose we use x of 0 equal to 0 then what we get when I set x equal to 0 a plus 0 equal to 0 that means a is 0. When I put x of l equal to 0 I get this condition but note a is already 0. So essentially the condition is b sin mu l equal to 0. I do not want b to be 0 so the condition is sin mu l equal to 0. So mu must satisfy sin mu l equal to 0 that is what we are going to see on the next slide. So since we are interested in non-zero solutions to the IB boundary value problem at least one of the constant AB should be non-zero but we already have A equal to 0 therefore to have B non-zero we must have sin mu L equal to 0 which means mu n equal to n pi by L where n is a natural number. So whenever mu n is of the form n pi by L for some natural number n sin of mu n L is 0. So let us summarize what we have got for on eigenvalues and eigenfunctions for the boundary value problem for x. The eigenvalues and corresponding eigenfunctions are indexed by n belongs to n. Lambda n is minus n square pi square by L square. Remember lambda equal to minus m square. Lambda is eigenvalue so lambda equal to minus mu square. And x and x is sin mu x. So x and x is sin mu is n pi by L x. Now we need to solve the ODE for t that is a step 2 that is very simple. So solve the ODE for t with lambda equal to lambda n for each n in n and call it tn. What is the equation t dash minus lambda n t equal to 0 that is t dash equal to lambda n t. So answers will be in terms of the exponential. So it is a constant times exponential of minus n square pi square by L square into t these are the solutions. Now let us propose a formal solution to the initial boundary value problem. So we propose a formal solution using superposition principle as this, this please note this is not really superposition principle this is an infinite superposition that is why I have put them in quotes. So uxt is proposed to be this, this is x and x, this is t and t and we take a combination of them and propose that as a solution to uxt. Of course each one of these terms solves heat equation that is why we believe that their sum will also solve but we have infinite sum so some justification is required. Since we are not doing the justification currently we just put this symbol. Now what are the coefficients bn? They need to be determined but we have one condition that we have not yet used which is ux0 equal to 5x. So put t equal to 0 you get ux0 equal to 5x when you put t equal to 0 this term will not be there because this will be 1. So what we have is 5x equal to summation n equal to 1 to infinity bn sin n pi by l into x. So thus bn are the Fourier sine coefficients of the function phi. See phi of x is given in terms of only pure sine series that is why this is called Fourier sine series for the function phi and bn's are the coefficients so we need to determine them. So extend the function phi to the interval minus l comma l as an odd function with respect to x equal to 0 because phi is given on the interval 0 l. So let the extended function be still denoted by phi. Then the Fourier series of phi takes this form because now the extended function is odd function it will not feature cosine terms the Fourier series will not feature cosine terms it features only the sine terms. And the coefficient bn is given by 2 by l integral 0 to l phi x sine of n pi by l x dx. We already discussed this in the context of wave equation. So a formal solution to the IBVP is given by this the only difference is we have substituted what are the coefficients bn. The coefficients bn are the Fourier sine coefficients for the function phi. So when is this formal solution defined above is indeed a classical solution. 
So, the answer is on the next slide. So, theorem let phi be such that the Fourier series of phi converges uniformly to phi. In fact, the Fourier sine series of phi converges uniformly to phi and phi of 0 equal to phi of L equal to 0. Then the function defined by this is a solution to IBVP. If you recall, we have defined the solution to IBVP only when t is restricted to finite intervals 0 comma t. But here the IBVP we have posed is for all t positive. So, what it means is that this function belongs to CH for every capital T fixed that is the meaning of the solution. A comment on the uniform convergence of Fourier series because this is what we have assumed in the theorem. There are conditions under which the Fourier sine series of phi converges uniformly to phi in the interval minus L to L or equivalently on 0 L. One such set of conditions is that phi is continuous and the integral 0 to L phi dash square dx is finite and of course phi of 0 equal to phi of L equal to 0 that is also required. So, let us summarize what we did in this lecture. IBVP for heat equation was solved using separation of variables method. A formal solution to IBVP was proposed. In a future lecture, we will prove that the formal solution obtained by separation of variables method is indeed a classical solution. Thank you.